of areas such ourselves. Mr. Speaker, we pray that the President, in dealing with this matter of the hunger, he will effect that Marshall Plan. It is our prayer and our hope that resources will be made available, not to just save lives on the short term, as has always been the case with previous administration. But, Mr. Speaker, resources will be made available to our counties to help in production so that hunger can be an issue of the past. Mr. Speaker, I plead with ex His Excellency the President and those policymakers around them that time has come that we should do away with the mentality of those sessional papers that legitimized the separation, economic separation of people within this country. So, Speaker, I pray that this will be the end of that, and we are very hopeful that the President will actualize the plan to create a new deal like President Roosevelt did for those disadvantaged areas in the U.S., that our counties, which are not as productive, will be helped to fit and to come up in this idea of bottom-up, so that those counties that are at the bottom now, Mr. Speaker, will be brought up. We preached this language. Our people have understood it, and we are waiting for action from the very highest level. Mr. Speaker, I want to speak to the issue of the National Government Constituency Development Fund. Mr. Speaker, I'm grateful that His Excellency the President stated in the opening of the House that he will support efforts to constitutionalize this fund. As I'm speaking to you, Mr. Speaker, in Tanariva County, and I'm sure in many other counties, so many students who are dependent on the CDF bursaries have been sent back homes by the head teachers and principals. Mr. Speaker, we cannot demonize these head of institutions. We cannot say they shouldn't send these children home because what are they going to feed them on? Mr. Speaker, these funds were a reality, and I know for a fact that there is a member of parliament from our county who was elected solely because he managed that CDF very well as far as bursaries were concerned. Every parent was saying, we will elect him because our children are not paying school fees. Mr. Speaker, these children are back home. Mr. Speaker, the president, and I know he's listening, must do something to the millions of Kenyans, not just in Tana River, but the whole country who are back at home. We, as legislators, even our governors, we don't have the resources to pay for each and every individual to send them back to school where they belong. We risk, Mr. Speaker, creation of a generation of people who are going to stay at home, and then they become despondent. They will go back to doing all the things we told them not to do. They will start engaging in activities that we as parents do not wish them to engage in. So, Mr. Speaker, I pray that on the floor of this House, as I plead with the government, that, Mr. Speaker, temporary measures will be made between the Treasury and the Ministry of Education, that funds will be transferred to these schools. Those funds that are 